Hey there, everybody. This is Brian, and today what I'm going to be going over is just some absolute basics and getting started with Slide. Um, if you're just getting into it or you uh, have been trying for a little while and feel like you're having a hard time getting the hang of it, uh, we're going to do a three-part video just to get you started. Um, and even if you've been playing for a while, maybe there'll be a couple little tips in here that'll help you getting familiar with left-hand technique, right-hand technique, and muting, um, but also some placement, uh, thinking chord-wise and also scale-wise, some things to just get started with. Um, we will also kind of cover a little bit uh, on gear and actual different types of slides, pedals and things that might work well, what kind of pickups work well. And we're just going to touch on that stuff. We're not going to get really in-depth. There would definitely be some more intermediate, advanced slide lessons to come in the near future. Uh, but this is really just for those of you uh, trying to get started. We're not going to get into open tunings and all that stuff in here, but very often a lot of slide players play with an open tuning or tune to an open chord. But you can obviously play in standard tuning just as well. I'll quickly talk about different types of slides. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different kinds out there, metal and glass and porcelain and um, ceramic. I, I started using brass early on just because the early chrome ones I had, I didn't really care for the way they sounded. And when I first tried brass, uh, it sounded better to me. Uh, then I tried glass later on, and I really liked that. Um, I, I keep a few of each of those around, and I go back and forth. The one I have been using for the past couple of years is actually made out of uh, solid titanium. And it is somewhere in between both sound and weight to me, both in between a glass and a uh, brass slide. It has a little bit more sustain than glass. It still has a little more of that openness and the top end that I think of with glass. Um, I, I tend to go back to brass slides if I'm doing things like uh, pedal steel style things where I need tons and tons of sustain. Um, but fortunately, uh, there's a lot out there on the market. Uh, go try a few. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is there are different uh, diameters and uh, thicknesses. Uh, they all affect the way it sounds, but definitely the way it feels, depending on which finger you put it on. Uh, I'd say 90% of slide players, if not more, are between either your, the ring finger or the pinky. I play with my ring finger. Um, I think there's pros and cons to both. It really just kind of depends on what you get used to. Um, a lot of pinky players, you have more fingers to play with behind the slide. There's some advanced techniques you can do with that. Uh, with your ring finger, you have a finger on either side of it in case you wanted to add any fingerings above it. Um, it's just where it's most comfortable to me. Um, again, try it on both. Depending on which one you're using, you may want a different di diameter slide. Obviously, your pinky, um, you'll probably want a narrower slide if, if you end up playing on there. Uh, as far as where to put the slide on your finger, a lot of people just let it go all the way down to their knuckle, um, and their hand position has to be so um, far out because of the, the angle where it connects with your knuckle. Um, I tend to bend my finger just a little bit and let the slide kind of sit on that first knuckle, not where it joins my hand, but that first knuckle here above my ring, um, and just kind of let it sit there. That way I can kind of keep a fairly normal hand position and the slide stays put. My finger is bent inside the slide just a little bit. If I straighten it up, it slides all the way down. Um, so I kind of keep it bent and it's almost kind of like holding it in place. That way, if I turn it upside down, I'm actually holding on to it. Um, something else may work for you. That's fine. Um, experiment. Uh, but that's at least a starting place. That's, that's um, what works well for me. But uh, let's actually get into like where the slide is placed on the strings and on the, the fingerboard. Probably the first thing that I see most beginning guitar players or guitar players just getting in slide do, which is uh, incorrect, is they think of fingering as if they were playing a note. When If you press down on, let's say, the seventh fret, you're actually pressing down below the seventh fret, in between the sixth and seventh fret. You're pressing down on the fingerboard itself, and then using that leverage, that angle where the string is resting against the seventh fret, and you're hearing it vibrate from there to there. But you don't actually put your finger directly on the fret. When you play slide, you actually want to be directly over the fret. Uh, otherwise, you will be flat. So here is what like this F sharp note or the seventh fret of the B string would sound like fretted. 
if I put the slide in that exact same spot, you can hear it's flat. I actually have to put the slide directly over the fret itself to get that same note. So one thing to practice maybe is playing any note on the fingerboard and then finding that spot where you're in tune or you're, you're working on your intonation and you're play a note and then kind of slide up and try to make sure you're in that right spot where that note's in tune. Uh, it's not a bad idea to actually have a tuner in line that you can look at and check yourself. So when you play that E note and you slide up to that E note, you can make sure that you're, you're spot on. Uh, as far as pressure, although some people definitely will press down on the strings a little bit harder and hear a little bit of that, you'll, you can hear that noise of the fret going down. Generally, the idea is that you want to press as light as you possibly can, just enough to make contact with the slide to the string, and the note rings down. You don't actually have to press physically down to the fingerboard like you would if you were fretting the note. So a lighter touch on the, the left hand. Now I have this guitar set up to where it's very playable. It's got tens on it. It's very playable with or without slide. Um, a lot of people will set up a guitar specifically for slide, higher action, heavier gauge strings. Um, it's not, if you're gonna play slide a lot, I would definitely recommend throwing a heavier string on there. Uh, typically when I play slide, I play 11s, um, sometimes a little higher, but um, I've got this guitar set up with 10s right now. Um, so it's it's doable, but I would suggest 11s or higher on an, on an electric. Uh, something else to consider for your left hand, another job of these fingers would be to mute out the other side of the strings. Now, typically when you've got an electric guitar and you're pressing down here, uh, these are sitting against a fret. Um, so they're gonna be naturally muted. But with a slide, that's not necessarily the case. And if I play a note, there's a note happening going up, which is this side of the string, but a little quieter, I'm hearing this side of the string, a note going down as this gets farther away. So if I weren't muting on the, the other side of the slide, a, a pattern like this, there's some really ugly overtones happening over here. But if I were to mute out on this side, it's a lot cleaner sounding. Uh, getting used to just having these fingers lay gently uh, on the strings behind the slide uh, will help clean up a lot of a lot of mud and uh, overtones. Uh, remember, don't press down hard on them like you would to fret. Just gently lie them on the strings to mute. Thinking ahead into more advanced stuff is using uh, the fingers that you're not using for slide. Practice playing some open chord shapes. Um, obviously, you're going to have to rearrange your hand a little bit probably based on the, the ways you're used to playing the chord. So instead of playing D like this, if you're using your ring finger with a slide, try playing D, try finding ways to finger D and C and G and E and A, um, even some bar chords. See what you can do to, to work on playing some uh, standard open chords while you have the slide on your hand and not utilizing it so that you could play songs um, perhaps without uh, certain songs that might call for like slide accents here and there and or a solo that you don't have time to like stop, put the slide on, play the solo, put it back off, if, especially if you're playing in a, uh, a solo or trio where there's maybe not a rhythm guitar player and you're covering both. Um, and that way you could like go straight from a chord into a slide part and still retain chord shapes and all those things while the slide is on your finger. There's also a little bit of learning curve with right hand technique for many guitar players. Uh, what you wanna do is your right hand is gonna actually be grabbing the strings, all of the strings or resting against strings to keep them quiet and muted out. So when I run the slide up and down the fretboard, you don't wanna hear this. 
you don't want to hear the notes ringing around. That way, if I'm playing a note and I, I do a little pattern like this, if I wasn't muting with my right hand, it would sound like this. I would get all those other notes moving with it. So it's your right hand's job to mute the other strings that you don't want. So I'm gonna show you a couple exercises in part two of this video to get used to that. Let's right now just talk about staying on one string and how we're gonna keep our right hand. So typically, let's say if I wanted to play a, a, a line or some sort of movement on the B string, I would rest the bottom of my thumb along the bass strings, probably up and put my thumb on the G, kind of holding it, and then use my first finger Again, kind of grabbing the B string and holding it, and my middle finger holding the E string. So right now, everything's muted from my right hand. And what I would do is I would pick the B string to, to hear the notes. And if I wanted to go to another string, which we'll cover a little bit more in depth, like I said in the next part of the video, I'm going back and forth between fingers. And I can, as soon as I pick one, I grab the other and vice versa. So I'm constantly picking and muting. So I can go between strings without the other one continuing to ring out like this. It's Okay, I'll show you that technique in the next video. A few little things obviously to work on and get comfortable with is vibrato techniques. And really it's just, it's not pressing down like any harder like you would with doing a fretted vibrato. It's just gonna be gently moving things back and forth around the plane of that center of the fret. So if I start directly on the center of this ninth fret here and I move back and forth, obviously you can do very exaggerated vibrato. or very subtle, uh, but it it's a nice touch. It, it, it lends more to the vocal quality that a slide has. It has a little bit more of a, a natural, almost like a human voice kind of uh, tonality. Um, and that's obviously something people do when they sing and play instruments and, and fretless instruments, uh, fretless bass, you know, stringed instruments like violin and cello, um, viola, upright bass, obviously vibrato is a huge part of of each player's signature uh, personality. So, um, you know, just practice those things. Hopefully that helps. Uh, what kind of pickups, what kind of guitar works well for it? What kind of effects typically work well? And although there are so many uh, examples of players who've used, you name it, from uh, players like Bonnie Raitt and Lowell George, who get uh, incredible sounds with uh, single coil strats. And then there's players, you know, you have players like Ry Cooter, who um, you know is, is well known for using uh, both lap steel pickups and gold foil pickups in in a in a non lap steel guitar um, to uh, obviously Derek Trucks and Dwayne Allman who uh, use you know old PAFs that sound incredible. It, 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 almost any pickup can work for slide. It really depends on the character you want. I personally have a fondness for P90s um, uh, or soap bar pickups as they're also known. Uh, I also really like this mini humbucker a lot. Um, uh, actually, this is the, one of the main guitars that I have set up to use specifically for slide usually. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't grab other things, uh, you know, depending on the flavor that I want. Um, whatever guitar you have will work. Um, I would say sometimes humbucking guitars are a little easier to learn on because uh, you typically get more sustain out of them. Um, you know, sometimes it's a little difficult with with single coils, um, when you first start playing, the notes don't ring out as long. Um, speaking of that, as far as effects go, you can obviously play uh, slide very clean. So here would be a very clean, just a little bit of reverb. And I'll start off on the bridge pickup. Now, the first thing that you might, uh, often people will add when playing slide is a compressor. So a compressor, uh, I mentioned Lowell George, um, his tone, uh, he used two, if I'm not mistaken, two compressors, studio style compressors run into one another, uh, just 
compressing the living bejesus out of the signal and it sounds amazing. Uh, but if you take a compressor pedal, um, I use a Barber Tone Press is the one I use, but there's tons of great ones out there. Um, what a compressor does is brings the dynamic range of your signal down. It takes the peaks uh, when the, when the waveform passes a certain threshold, it will lower the volume of that signal by whatever ratio. If it's a two to one, it'll cut it in half. If it's, it's three to one, it's a third is quiet. Um, most guitar pedal compressors, you don't even have to get into the minutia of that. There's automatic settings. There's just a sustain knob often and a volume knob and sometimes now a blend knob, which blends in your dry signal, which I really like because the problem with the compression is often you lose the transients, you lose the attack, and when you dig in hard, it squashes down. So if you don't want to lose that attack and punch, you can dial in your dry sound if any compressor has a blend knob. Um, but I'll show you what it sounds like with and without a compressor, and I'll have the compression set pretty high so you can hear um, a more dramatic effect. One thing to keep in mind with a compressor is uh, it will bring up the noise floor, especially with, so I'm gonna be on a single coil pickup here, the soap bar. When I turn it on, you can hear the noise floor came up. So here it is off. Here it is on. One thing you'll notice with a compressor is you get a lot more sustain because it's bringing those quiet sounds up. It's making your loud sounds quiet and bringing the quiet sounds up. So as the note dies down, the compressor kind of pulls that, that quiet sound back up. So you get this long sustain. Um, uh, you know, I tend to kick a compressor on pretty often when I'm playing slide, not always. Uh, when I'm playing gainy or distortion or, you know, an amp that's really cranked with some gain, I'll probably use less compression because the overdrive will naturally compress the signal. Uh, that's the other option. Obviously, gain pedals work. Um, I don't tend to play, and you don't hear that many players play super high gain with compression. It's usually overdrive. Um, uh, but if you like the way it sounds, have at it. Um, but typically, compression, milder overdrive, um, often... You know, some people might put on like a slap back delay. Um, really kind of depends, you know, there's not any right or wrong to any of it. Uh, experiment, but I would say start off worrying mainly about technique first. Uh, and if you are going to look at any one single effect to get... Um, probably the most common thing that most slide players use is check out a compressor. Okay, for part two of, of this little beginning slide tutorial, uh, it will be covering looking at some scales uh, on a single string in a linear fashion and looking at some things to practice. We'll look at uh, four different scales. There are actually five, maybe five different scales, but primarily starting and focusing on some pentatonic stuff and then looking at some full seven note diatonic scales. Um, and there will be more lessons later on and really focusing on, on placement and how to put those for different types of songs. But um, really right now, just getting your hands used to it and understanding the distances of the intervals between those scales um, and learning what they sound like. Uh, we'll also cover some very basics of just getting used to going back and forth between two strings. Um, and then part three, we're going to look at uh, playing kind of in a chord fashion. Like if you wanted to add multiple notes at one time instead of these single notes uh, that, that you'll find in part two uh, and intermingling that with single notes, single notes and chords. Um, and that should give you at least plenty to work on for a while and get the hang of it. Take it slow. Whenever practicing anything new, I highly recommend starting it off slow and get it clean and clear and, and make sure you're intonating right. Make sure you're not getting weird noises or fret buzzes. So uh, that way, as you build speed on it, you're building speed on something that sounds good and not just speeding up something that's going to sound sloppy. L learning songs, any songs that you can, uh, there's obviously a lot of classic songs out there. There's a lot of great slide players. Um, I mentioned a handful, but I mean, George Harrison and uh, Blake Mills. Uh, there's a lot of uh, newer, younger players I've seen. Um, Joey Landreth and Sonny Landreth is, is amazing. Uh, there's so many 
so many killer players out there. Um, but even just start with something easy. Learn a, a vocal line or a simple part. Um, just learn some basic melodies and learn how to just uh, get the feel of the slide in your left hand and the feel of the muting in your right hand. And I hope that helps. Thank you.